What's up everybody? This is Buck Grant with Aperture. I am here with Eli Knight from Knight Fujitsu and part of the Aperture team. We're gonna go over like how to use fixed faint and footwork in order to close the reactionary gap. Um, this is a hard thing to teach people because it's a little bit conceptual. We understand, for example, if I'm standing in front of someone, if he fakes a jab or faints with his body by changing level, he's trying to draw a response out of me, all right? And when, within that response, he has a window of opportunity to make contact. Problem is, how do you develop that skill? So what we do, and there's a couple of different layers to this. The first way I learned it, and I'll show you the classic way, and then I'll show you the way that I've, I've modified the drill. So the first thing is we establish a baseline of what the target is. And we're gonna just stick with straight punches for now. So all of the punches for now will be on this pad. So if you throw the jab here, or you throw the cross, you can throw any one of those punches, and I'm just gonna catch. Okay. So once we've established that baseline, I'm going to ask the person in front of me to try to make contact on this pad, and my objective is to not let him do it, okay? So I hold the pad up, and he throws the punch. Okay. So, if he gets in a steady rhythm, and it becomes more of a pad work thing, you see it's like it's really difficult to make contact. And at the end of the day, the punch that doesn't land doesn't knock you out. You have all the power in the world, if he doesn't make contact. So what he starts to learn now is how to relax the shoulders, because when your body's a little tense, for example, you're giving me all the pre-cues pre I need in order to see the punch. So now that he knows he has to beat this hand, he's gonna start doing things like faking and fainting to draw my hand out so he can get the clean target, right? So if I'm here and he fakes, and I overreact, he makes contact. It's a fast shot, see? You, you try to move. So now no, he's starting to get into a little bit of rhythm now. He moves around, he's relaxed. I try to stop it. And then we just start to play. And I try to read his shoulders. Yeah, there we go, that's perfect. The hardest part with this is the person here keeping this hand in play. There's a tendency when you start to do this drill, because we both start to get competitive, is that I start to blade a little. And now he's in this impossible situation where he can't make contact, right? So I started to modify the drill. Now I'll just put the hand on the chest. Now there's no way for me to move, and it keeps the honesty and the integrity of the drill. This is not a power drill, he's just trying to make contact, he's trying to touch. I can hold it here, or I can hold it here, whatever's more comfortable for me. And so he starts the baseline by making contact, and then I go back to the drill. Ah, there we go. He fakes, he faints, develops a little bit of rhythm, a little style with his game. And then we move around. It becomes really fun on both sides. This is something you can do with students, you do as a pad holder. He develops an attribute that's very hard to articulate, but it becomes very immediate in the drill. If he can't make contact, he has to now figure it out. And there's a concept that's built into this about the idea of the fighter has to be able to think for themselves. Whether it be self-defense or even in a ring, in a ring, at least he has the option of having a cornerman yell something out. But at the end of the day, even if I'm yelling something out, he's not on puppet strings. He's fighting his own fight. He has to figure out the puzzle himself. I have to give him the tools in order to fill it, figure out that puzzle. So in this drill, for example, I could tell him, like, fake the left hand through the right. <laughs> now I know what he's about to do, right? But if we're here and he just kind of on his own figure out, oh, I do whatever, oh, boom, and now he tries to trick me a little bit, right? Yeah, and now he starts getting creative. He starts getting expressive. He starts doing things like the Sugar Ray Leonard or some moving his head or he gets to play and have fun with it too. Give that a shot, play around, come up with different fakes of faints on your own that work really well for you. Feel free to share it with the Aperture page. Let us know what comes out of your arsenal and just get really explorative with it. Uh, see what comes into your game and uh, make it your own by drilling it, pressure testing it. If you have any questions or you wanna know what we're getting into, come to the Aperture page. Thanks again for your support, guys. See you soon.
I like uh, Buck's translation of that. I mean, I, I've done things where you intentionally, you know, you're trying to make it more of an elusive target so the guy has to get creative like that. But that one's really drawing me in and him using that at center mass like that and, and having me just strike here. That that little tweak on it does something really special to it because, yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's kind of making me have to get more strategic about it, you know. Where'd you learn how to punch, man? Like you're, you're supposed to be a jiu-jitsu guy, right? <laughs> I've done, I've, I've done Muay Thai as long as I've done jiu-jitsu for like 20 years, but it's, it's a lot more. It's my backup. It's my, my, not my backup. My secondary, my hobby art, you know. And I, I, I take it very seriously, and I train it every single week, multiple times a week. But it's, it's not my base. It's like jiu-jitsu. So we cross-train at Aperture Sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one-trick ponies in here. Nope. <laughs> we all cross-train. We all, we all uh, dabble in all the arts because we're. We're seeking through the light, we're looking for the truth. Right on. And, and I film, edit, and direct, so I'm multidisciplinary too. Yep. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for sharing that. It was really exciting for me to see. I've never seen anything like that, and I feel like I learned something. Um, and I think people who watch this video can 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 take this and do this and make yeah. that transition from having watched something to having done something to having learned something. I want to I want to throw one little just thought experiment into this entire thing so if you're looking at this drill I like to use the language like feeder receiver some people like attacker defender feeder receiver of course borrow from the the Syoc Kali system the feeder person starting the combat loop the receiver is the one ending the combat loop so it's a circular exchange of information so I want you to pay around play around with the idea of which one in this drill is the feeder and which one is the receiver <laughs> yeah that's a thought that's a thought experiment because the answer might surprise you if you continue to think about it.